Welcome to the Midlife Career Rebel, the podcast created for high achieving professional women to gain the clarity, confidence, and courage they need to go after and get the life and career they want. I'm your host, Dr. Carol Parker Walsh, lawyer, social scientist, brand strategist, executive coach, entrepreneur, and midlife career rebel. Each week, you'll learn strategies to manage your mind, navigate the challenges of midlife, and take control of your career so you can thrive doing the work you love. So if you're ready to tear up that rule book and create your own, you're in the right place. And I can't wait to show you how. Hey, Rebels, welcome back to the podcast. Today, I want to talk about how to know if it's time for a career change and how to position yourself successfully for that process. So you know when you hear that whisper deep inside that's telling you like this ain't it or that you're meant to do something different or something more or when you're at a crossroad or an inflection point in your life and career wondering what path or direction should I take next? Well, that usually is a strong indicator that it may be time to think about doing something different. In fact, it's one of the most common issues facing the applicants that we get in the Career Rebel Academy. Now, I've already shared one of my own inflection points with you, and it was that near-fatal car accident that I talk about. And that was the catalyst that set me on my current career path of starting this business and even hosting this podcast. And even though I had been hearing that whisper, that call for change way before the accident occurred, it was that event. That event was the catalyst that really changed everything for me. And it's actually not uncommon for many of us to experience these moments of inflection throughout the course of our personal and professional life, times where we are questioning our path and if we're on the right course and should we stay the course or do something new or different. And it could be a life-altering experience like the accident that I experienced or a health scare or a major birthday like turning 40, 50, or 60. It could be a new marriage, a divorce, a birth of a child, an unexpected loss of a loved one or losing a job, or yes, even a global pandemic, all of these things, when we experience these significant, profound moments in our lives, it makes us begin to question pretty much everything. In fact, what's interesting is that I recently got an email from my primary doctor notifying her practice and her patients that she's taking a break and decided to stay home to be a full-time mom. And she started off by saying, after some reflection. So clearly there was an inception point for her that made her revisit and rethink about what was important and what mattered and the direction she was on that had her decide to make the best decision for herself and her family to change courses, to change directions, and to do something different. So instead of ignoring what's going on or trying to keep our head down to get through these life or course changing experiences... We can look at it as an invitation to explore, to inquire, and possibly rethink our assumptions about the status quo, much like my doctor did and like the women in the academy are currently doing. The midlife pivot itself is a time of inflection. It's a pivotal time of life and it provides an invitation to rediscover who you are and rethink the direction that you're going. In midlife, some aspects of our lives are on the upward trajectory while others are not. Our identities have become muddled between work, family, and our personal wants and desires. And while caring for aging parents and our children, we're also trying to reconcile our younger self with the older one that's emerging every day. I mean, there's a lot going on, making it a very complex and confusing time for many. And when that soft whisper turns into a loud roar, You can either continue to ignore it, become reactive and make an impulsive decision, or become paralyzed by the uncertainty of what to do next. Now, another indicator that it may be time to reflect on where you're headed, to re-examine your priorities and potentially engage in a career course correction, is if you're experiencing the Sunday night blues or what I call the Monday morning flu. And while you may think you're good at ignoring mentally rationalizing or justifying your choices, our bodies will always tell us the truth. In my last role in academic leadership, I remember constantly catching colds and having bouts of bronchitis. In fact, my dean and provost constantly commented on the fact that I was sick, wondering if something was wrong. And at the time, I attributed my frequent illnesses to my busy and recurrent travel schedule. But as my mind tried to rationalize what was going on, my body was telling me the truth of the situation, that I was overstressed, undervalued, working against my personal values and genius, and flat out unhappy. 
And at this time, the whisper had become a loud roar that I couldn't ignore anymore. So what do you do when you're hearing that whisper, when you're dissatisfied and unfulfilled at work, when you've reached a point of inflection, or your body is trying to give you a clue about your current level of career satisfaction? What do you do when you believe, yep, this is time for a change? Well, once you're clear that something absolutely needs to change, there are three important steps that you need to take to position yourself for a successful pivot shift or transition. And I want you to take notes on this and really pay attention to what I'm sharing. The first is to manage your thoughts. Now, one of the things that can stop people dead in their tracks before they even get started is the panic and worry about what will happen if I make a change. And according to the American Institute of Stress, of the top 43 most stressful life events, changing careers is number 18. And that's actually not surprising because our brains are wired to panic every time we face something new or different. It's because our most powerful motivational and emotional drivers lie in the primitive part of our brain. And our actions at this level are motivated by three deeply rooted survival instincts to seek pleasure, avoid pain, and maintain the status quo, or at least conserve energy and take the path of least resistance. It's called the motivational triad, and it's our brain's way of trying to keep us safe. But while the brain is trying to keep us safe, it actually causes us to be overly cautious, risk averse, hesitant, and fearful of change, difference, or the unfamiliar. So when you're faced with the idea of change or a transition, you're going to start to feel a lot of stress, anxiety, and overwhelmed. But when you're flooded with these emotions, you can't think clearly or logically or make the best decisions for yourself and your career. So it's important to remember, however, that our feelings come from our thoughts. And when we learn to manage our thoughts, we can also manage that primitive part of our brain, calm it down, and manage our emotions. According to psychologists, 85% of what we actually worry about never happens. So it doesn't help to entertain the stressful or anxiety provoking scenarios our brain is throwing at us, right? Because they're never going to come to fruition. So when you find yourself thinking, oh, I'll never have it better than where I am now, or I want to make a career change, but I don't have enough skills or experience in you fill in the blank, or I can't make this money anyplace else. I need to stay. I want you to argue that line of thinking and try to consider what could be possible for you with a career change. Managing your thoughts takes practice. So you want to develop an intentional practice of becoming aware of what's going on in that brain of yours, to become aware of those thoughts that are stopping you from moving forward, that are keeping you from believing in what's possible. Stop believing all the negative shit your brain is feeding you. Remember, it's just trying to keep you safe and making you stay safe. It's unfortunately causing you to avoid moving forward. But because it has good intentions, I want you to be compassionate with yourself, but don't stay stuck. Now, I did a whole episode, episode three in the podcast, where I talk about managing your mind, and that would be a good one to revisit to talk about some of the tools and strategies to go a little bit in depth in what I mean by this. But the key is you want to capture your thinking. When you start thinking of these imaginary scenarios or the worst case scenarios, challenge it. Don't accept it as a truth. Challenge it and manage your emotions that are causing this way of thinking by creating thoughts that helps you to be calm and think rationally about what the next best step is for you. Now, the second thing is, and this is really important, is that you have to know what you have to offer. Know what you have to offer to the world. And when I say know what you have to offer, I mean at a cellular level, you need to know that what you bring to the table is brilliant, it's necessary, and will bring a return on investment to whomever you decide to work for or with. Your pay or income has a direct correlation to the value you believe you bring to the table. It's why many women struggle with changing their jobs or careers because they fear they'll lose income. They won't make what they're currently making. But that's because you don't see, know, or believe in the value of what you have to offer. You don't get paid for the hours you work or how much you show up or even the title that you're carrying. 
you get paid based on the value the company believes that you bring and the value you know you bring to the table. The value you're able to offer through the results that you deliver. That is what equates value and income. So it doesn't matter what a company says that the salary pays for a particular job. If you can show and prove that you can provide tremendous value by what you bring to the table, what you have to offer, they will pay you for that value, believing that you're going to bring the results that you say you can. That's what salary negotiation is all about. That's why people negotiate. And that's why companies are waiting for you to negotiate, are waiting for you to say, this is what I bring to the table and this is what it's worth and this is what you need to pay me. That's why women also are less likely to negotiate their salary because unfortunately we don't have that cellular level confidence in what we have to offer or bring to the table. We don't have that cellular level confidence in our zone of genius. That's why we don't negotiate. 70% of us do not negotiate our salaries. And when you don't know the value of what you have to offer, you offer it to the wrong people who can't appreciate it or value what you bring. In other words, out of worry, fear, or desperation, you will throw your resume at anything that moves, applying for positions, hoping to get something, anything. And then when you don't land an interview or don't get the job, you think it's because of you or that you don't have what it takes. But the truth is you've applied for positions that are out of alignment with your genius and with the brilliance that you bring to the table. And you've applied to organizations that don't value your particular genius. It's about finding the match. It's about knowing what you bring to the table and finding organizations that want that so that you can bring the results to them, those are the ones that are gonna pay you. And when you're clear on your brilliance and the genius you bring, you act in accordance with that knowledge. You're confident that you'll be able to be paid your value. It's easily recognizable by the person or the organization who is willing to pay and give you what you deserve. And you have no trouble or hesitation negotiating and asking for what you want to be paid according to the value and the results that you bring. So there are three questions that you want to ask yourself to know, and you want to know these answers before you embark on a career change. Now, the first question is, what is my zone of genius, right? What are my superpowers, as I like to call them? The gifts, the talents, the strengths, the skills that I bring to the table. And this isn't about like your education or your degrees, because a lot of times we confuse that the more certifications and education degrees we have, that that should equate to value. But it doesn't. There are people, you know, my grandmother is the old saying, you may have heard this before, called an educated fool. There are people who have education and a lot of degrees, but still can't deliver on results because they don't believe or have the confidence in what it is that they have to offer. So this isn't about your education or degrees or even jobs that you've held in the past. It's about your unique promise of value that you bring to the table. So you want to ask yourself, are you currently working in that zone of genius? Because that may be an indicator that you're not in the right space and it's time for change. Now, the second question is, how do I want to provide that value I offer, right? What do you want your contribution to be? What's the meaningful work that you want to do in the world, right? So ask yourself, am I doing that even now? As you answer that question, reflect on, am I doing that work now? Again, another indicator that you may need to make a change. The third and final question is, where am I doing? Am I doing it in a place that's aligned with my values and lifestyle, right? So as you think about where you are, Is it aligned with your values and lifestyle, the vision that you have for yourself, which we'll talk about in a moment? So these are three key questions that if you know the answers to, it'll help you to develop that cellular level confidence on what you have to offer and knowing you will always be in a position to get exactly what you want if you're in the midst of a change. When you understand your value and you know the brilliance you have to offer, when it comes to shifting, pivoting, or changing careers, you'll be confident in the process and less fearful about the outcome. Now, the third thing is that you've got to get a clear career vision. So spend some time envisioning the future you want for your life and career. There's a saying that goes, without a vision of your future, you'll return to your past. And our minds like to think about what's possible for our future from our past because it's predictable and it's safe. Remember, 
the motivational triad, the brain likes to keep status quo and to keep us safe. So we create dreams and visions, oftentimes that are basically just reiterations or reframing of really where we are right now and what we already have. So for example, we'll have a vision to do the exact same thing, but maybe at a different place. We have goals and visions based on things that we think we can already achieve based on past efforts and past successes. We don't think about the impossible dream because the first thing that pops up is what I call the treachery of how. We're like, how can we do it? How can it get done? So if I don't know how, I can't possibly set that as a goal. But that's the wrong way to go. In order to do and achieve things that are new and different, you have to let go of who you are and where you are right now to make room for who you will become and what's possible for you in the future. Are you with me on this? Are you hearing what I'm saying? No matter where you are in your career, you can create an incredibly powerful vision by living that future right now. So start by asking yourself another set of questions. Think about where you wanna be in your career a year or five years from now, and then ask, where do I wanna be? And even more importantly, who do I wanna be? And then what do I want to be doing? What value do I wanna offer? Now allow yourself the gift of imagination here. Don't be caught up in the treachery of how. Your vision should be big and bold and fun and exciting, and it should push and stretch you. So don't censor yourself here. Your imagination is where your possibilities live. And then next, once you answer those questions, I want you to imagine that you're already there. You're already in that space. You've achieved your vision. You're in that new career. You've landed that executive position. You started that new business. Who are you in that new career? How do you show up? What are you doing differently than you're doing now? Write it all down. What advice would your future self have for you today to help you get to where you want to be? What would she tell you to do about your current role or a new opportunity that gets presented to you or that whisper in your mind that's telling you you want something more, you need something different, that voice is telling you it's time for a change? Creating your career vision, that's what takes you beyond the traditional vision board exercises you may have done year after year in the past. And listen, I am not knocking vision boards. I believe in the power of writing down your visions. But in order for them to be effective, you have to do more than just add images to a board or a sheet of paper. You have to think deeply about what you want to be and the steps it takes to get you what you want. You need to take inventory of what you need to start doing and stop doing, what communities you need to start or stop affiliating with, what resources you need access to, like a coach or a therapist, or what material or social resources and networks you need to start accessing today. Jen Sincero, author of You Are a Badass, said it beautifully. She said that in order to create a new life, you must become unavailable to your current one. Now, one of my mentors has a goal of making $100 million in one year in her business because she wants to be an example of what's possible. And when she made that goal, she may have been around, I don't know, like 20 million a year in her business. She's now at about 57 million and growing. But what she says repetitively that always sticks in my mind is that who she is today is not what will get her to $100 million a year. So every day she works on becoming a $100 million a year business owner because that future version of herself has already achieved it and knows how she achieved it. So she spends her time in that mindset with those thoughts, taking actions of a $100 million a year business owner. And you think about that, when you step into the future vision of where you see yourself going, if you're creating a vision or even having a vision board, instead of looking at it thinking, oh, hopefully one day I'll be there, what would you do differently today if you were there? That person carries herself differently, has a different perspective about her career. She problem solves differently. She deals with challenges and fears differently. She dresses differently. She manages her schedule differently and she shows up differently. That's how you create a vision for what you want and achieve it. 
You don't become someone different once you achieve your vision. You become someone different on the path to achieving your vision. So spend some time getting clear on what that is, who that person is, what she wants, and what she's doing to get it. Taking yourself out of your past and positioning yourself in the future you, that will help you to navigate the new terrain you're embarking upon during any career pivot or change. Listen, no job is perfect. And there's a difference between needing a break, needing to adjust your current work conditions and needing to move on to something new. By working through these three key steps, you'll get the clarity you need to know what's right for you. So let me take a moment and recap what those three steps are. First, you got to manage your mind. Manage your thoughts and what you're thinking and don't get caught up believing all the negative bullshit your brain is feeding you. It's just in panic mode. Calm it down. Let's go to the prefrontal cortex that evolves self so we can think calmly, logically about what our next move needs to be. Second, we need to know what we have to offer, what we bring to the table. You got to know your gift zone and genius and your brilliance that you bring to the table. You have to believe it deeply more than anyone else. And then you have to find the places that are aligned to that so that you can get paid what you know the results that you know you can bring to the table. And then finally, you got to get a clear career vision. You got to have a vision so you know who it is you are trying to become, what it is you are trying to step into, so that you can begin taking the action steps today to get there. The action steps today that will land you into the career and life you want. It's important that you never fear, feel trapped by the decisions that you made years ago in your past. And sometimes we do. We have this uh, sunk cost fallacy where we hold on to all of the time that we invested into the decisions we made in our past that keeps us stuck and trapped where we are right now. But it's important that you never feel trapped by the decisions you made years ago. There's a quote by F. Scott Fitzgerald that has become one of my mantras, particularly after I turned 50 and launched my own business. And it goes like this. It's never too late to be whoever you want to be. I hope you live a life you're proud of. And if you find that you're not, I hope you have the strength to start over. Isn't that powerful? But it is so true. The beautiful thing about life is that you can always start over. You never have to feel trapped by a decision you made years ago in your 20s or before you got married or had kids or moved across country or whatever the case is. Decisions you made at different stages and places in your life that were based on different inflection points in your life. When you look at life as a journey, everything you do is in preparation for your next step, your next chapter. In fact, I believe that everything I've done in the past has prepared me for the work I'm doing today and the decisions I'm making today are preparing me for the ones that will come when I get into my 60s. But to get to the place or places you want to be, you got to roll up your sleeves, ask yourself the tough questions, embrace whatever answers you find, and take intentional action to achieve the results you want. These skills will help you navigate every inflection point in your personal and professional life and any periods of change and uncertainty. Well, that's it for today, Rebels. Don't forget to join me in The Boardroom, a monthly facilitated discussion on how to successfully navigate the key issues facing midlife career professional women, particularly those who are senior leaders, rising executives, and experienced high achievers. We're going to discuss issues just like this one that we talked about today and so much more. We'll meet the last Friday of the month at 10 a.m. And if you can't make it, that's okay. You'll be able to get the recording if you register. And you can register at carolparkerwalsh.com forward slash boardroom. And I'll also add the link in the show notes for your convenience. Also, please leave a review and subscribe to the podcast and share it with those you believe could benefit from what I'm sharing with you today. If you find it useful, chances are your colleagues and peers will too. (laughs) So until next time, have an amazingly rebellious week. 
Hey, if you're loving what you're learning on the podcast, then you've got to come check out the Career Rebel Academy. It's where you'll get the individual help and support you need applying the concepts and strategies you're learning here and so much more. You'll be joined by a community of other rebels just like you, and I'll be there as your guide every step of the way. If you're genuinely looking to change the course of your life and career, I promise you, this is the place you'll want to be. Just go to www.carolparkerwalsh.com forward slash career dash rebel dash academy. I can't wait to see you there.